Hi, I'm Scott Kelly, and I'm one of the product managers here at NetDocuments. Um, in a prior life, I was an attorney and the founder of a company called After Pattern that was acquired by NetDocuments in 2021. Um, and today I'm here to talk about uh, Pattern Builder, which is the technology based on After Pattern that helps lawyers, uh, legal professionals of all kinds um, automate their workflows and their documents. Scott, thanks for being with me. I think that's actually a pretty good uh, explanation of of Pattern Builder and, and how it's integrating it in that docs. It's always difficult to explain or describe kind of what what has classically been called document automation, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I think a, an automator of, of sorts to, to help with that document. So um, I understand, you know, we're going to go into kind of how after pattern or how pattern builder i'm never going to get good at that but how, <laughs> how pattern builder integrates into net documents but then you guys have released recently um data tables which to me is kind of a natural um step for something like pattern builder of hey we're we're consuming a lot of information here we're bringing in a lot of information let's make sure that people can reuse it um yeah and i'm sure that's a really really simple way of, of saying it and i'm missing something so i'm glad that you're going to be able to to show us what it's all about so whenever you're ready if you don't mind let's see under the hood here yeah yeah so i'm really excited to be here today and i i think you hit on exactly um kind of the the promise but also the the difficulty of a of a of a solution like pattern builder which is that it is um, a toolkit. You can build what you want. You can automate what you want. Mm -hmm. That could be a document. It could be your data. It could be your workflows. Um, and so sometimes demos like this are kind of interesting because what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you a few use cases that I built out, um, you know, myself, mm -hmm. and so we'll go through those. But you could build so many different things uh, fit to purpose for your needs. Uh, your challenges and your workflows. And so that's that's how I always like to start one of these demos is like, look, I'm going to show you a couple use cases uh, uh, that that kind of show you that toolkit in practice. Um, but really, uh, the only limit is is your imagination. So. Yeah, I, I I like that because I, I think of the, the Menlo's paradox um, in getting something like this, like attorneys watching this need to know what the tool can do before mm -hmm. they can do the other things, you know, and, and you kind of have to, to see it, see some ideas and then expand upon that. Um, so real excited about this. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. So let, let's kind of dig into a, a simple use case that doesn't involve data tables, the kind of new functionality we've added to pattern builder. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to transition into a kind of more complex use case, multi-step use case that does leverage that great new capability. Um, right. So first, let's orient ourselves. Where are we? We're in the Net Documents platform, and I think that's a really important thing to start with. Is just saying, like, look, um, this capability, Pattern Builder, unlike a lot of the workflow and, and document automation solutions out there, which are a spot solution, mm -hmm. um, this is built natively into the Net Documents platform. A platform that's been built over twenty years has amazing functionality for the management, the permissioning, the versioning and doing work on your documents. And now this capability sits right in inside of here um, under this apps tab right here. So, mm -hmm. so you know, where are we right here? We're in a workspace. Um, for this example that I'm gonna be demoing, um, let's imagine that we're um, a law firm that helps small businesses with their kind of general counsel needs. So we're sort of like a okay. fractional uh, general counsel for various, um, you know, clients. And we have this workspace set up for one of our uh, great clients, General Rotors, <laughs> and they, uh, you know, they have us prepare a bunch of documents for them all the time. And every time they hire a new employee, um, they need uh, three documents um, prepared. They need a proprietary inventions agreement. And so you see all these ones that we've prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got the, you know, an I-9 form, which is a standard immigration form. And then they've got this employment offer um, that we need to prepare as well. And so instead of us going through and, you know, having to uh, kind of manually prepare these based on some precedent documents we have with Pattern Builder, we can just go over to our apps tab and we can see the custom workflows that we have built out that are fit to purpose for this employment workflow. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have this employment workflow. If we were in a real estate matter, maybe we'd have a set of real estate workflows. Um, you, you can customize it depending on uh, what your needs are. 
But let's just go through an app and just kind of show you it in action. Okay. So here I go and I click on the app and it loads in a separate page. And this form that you're going to see is basically a form that is, um, you know, our firm has built out to our needs. So everything you see here um, is something you can specify via our no code editor, which we're mm -hmm. going to go into a little bit later. Um, but yeah, so I built it, we built it out and I'm not going to bore you with actually like typing in a lot of information. I'm going to use this <laughs> handy dandy uh, plugin up here to just fill in some dummy information. Uh, but let's imagine I filled this out. So we're, we're intaking for a new uh, employee. It's marketing um, employee. They're Pascal Waters. Okay. So Pascal Waters, uh, let, maybe let's change a few of these to make it a little bit more realistic. So there we go. They live at 321 Side Street. Their apartment number is one. They live in a uh, new city. And let's go down here and maybe just change that social. So there we go. Let's go ahead and hit continue. And you'll see immediately one of the powerful functionalities of Pattern Builder, which is not only can you create your own customized workflows and forms, but those can include dynamic logic. So this is mm. a simple example of logic, but right here, let's say, you know, for some employment offers you generate, you need to include stock options. And so, you know, you input the salary, let's say, uh, but you also want to include stock options. So you've got that and it dynamically reveals questions. Mm -hmm. Now you could do this within a page or you could have logic that actually says, okay, let's show an entirely new page of questions based okay. on this logic. Um, so let's just fill in some information there. Let's also add a sales commission in there and let's go ahead and hit continue. Now, another really powerful thing about Pattern Builder is it's not just for automating like a single document. Mm -hmm. You can automate one, two, three, 10, 100 documents all at once, depending on what your needs are. Uh, for this demo, we're actually just going through and we're going to automate the employment offer as well as these two optional kind of agreements. So we've got these two other ones, an inventions agreement and the I-9 form. Um, because we checked off the inventions agreement, uh, we have this question here, which is, does the employee, Pascal Waters, have prior inventions? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Mm -hmm. And this will actually take us into what's called a loop. And I would say this is where, again, where a lot of automation functionality out there on the market, it kind of falls down with list and loop functionality. But that's mm -hmm. a really, really common need within the legal sector. I need to collect a list of assets. I need to collect a list of children, a uh, list right. of properties, right? right. Um, and the ability to actually be able to you know, go through and say, okay, you know, here's one new item, the new, new thing. That's what they invented. It's estimated value of this. Hit continue. And then start to create a list, just build a list um, based on uh, this functionality is really, really important. Uh, okay, guys, if you don't mind, let, let me hang on that for a second, just to kind yeah. of, uh, uh, because that, that is really important. Um, I remember when I was automating documents back at, at my firm, one of the, the biggest difficulties was having an infinite number of blank an infinite yeah. number of defendants, an infinite number of plaintiffs when I was trying to do a, a warrant or something like that. And a lot of times I got to where the option of 10, I would think of a ridiculous <laughs> number and say that that's how many times I, I go through this, this uh, potential, but having an infinite loop like this and being able to say, okay, we're going to just, do you want to add another? Do you want to add another um, mm -hmm. is, is really important and it's something you don't necessarily think of on the front end, but when you get to that and you can't do it, it's extremely frustrating. Yeah, it, it, it really is. And it can be, you know, solutions that don't support it or do support it, but don't do it well. Mm -hmm. um, it, it can add to uh, the building process a lot. You know, right. you, you end up creating essentially a fake loop where you have to add 10 versions of the the same set of question. And then of mm -hmm. course the first client you have will have 11 of those things <laughs> break yeah. your automation. Every time, every time yeah. the, the difficulty isn't doing the things that we think about. It's, it's doing those edge cases, getting those edge that's cases right. taken care of. And that's what this does. Yeah. And pattern builders really fit to purpose for, for legal in that there's a lot of complexity. And so we give you the tools you need mm -hmm. um, to build. We think of ourselves a lot like Excel in that anyone can immediately get value out of Microsoft Excel, even if you don't know much about it. Because you can go in there, create a table, maybe add some columns, maybe a recipe, for example. Mm -hmm. But there's also deep, deep functionality that as you learn more, you can access to build even more powerful applications 
Um, so we take that exact same approach with Pattern Builder. Mm. Now here you'll see that um, we've reached the end of our session and we've actually generated three documents. Now we've got a couple options here. We can download it directly to our desktop. But again, because this is built directly into Net Documents, we've actually um, not only generated these documents, but we filed them right back into Net Documents exactly where the user wants them. So let's actually you know, take a look at one of these agreements that we've generated. Mm -hmm. We've got an employment offer here. It's piped in all that information about Pascal Waters, their salary, their benefits. We've got some um, you know, provisions that have been dynamically added, like the stock options and the sales commission. If mm -hmm. they weren't there, if we hadn't checked off those checkboxes, this whole agreement would get dynamically renumbered um, without you having to do anything extra. So that's that's really important. Scroll down here. And yeah, we see all that information filled in. And we've also associated the right metadata with this document. So not okay. only have we um, you know, generated the document, but it has the right metadata. And better yet, it's filed exactly where we want. So if we go back to our workspace, which is where we began kind of our journey, we'll see that under each of the appropriate kind of filters that we want, mm -hmm. Pascal Waters' uh, various um, agreements are showing up there. So there we mm -hmm. go. And there we go. So all three of those have been filed exactly where we want. Now, a few things I want to talk about uh, on, kind of on the document automation side. Let's look at this other agreement right here, which is the uh, inventions agreement. Um, and this is kind of getting back to and sort of completing the story around lists. Mm -hmm. So we scroll down here. You'll remember we collected some information about some inventions. Well, we've taken those inventions and we've outputted them into a table. And not only that, but we've actually summed up the value of those various inventions right here. Um, so that's just another example of kind of how we built out all the logical tools you need to represent your business rules and generate, you know, the agreements or the automations you need to generate. Now that that's another thing. Um, hang on that one for a second yeah. of being Let's able to create tables and then use the information in those tables to create sums and things like that. Like being able to add two numbers together that were dynamically put in is not something you find in every piece of, of automation software. Yeah, that, that's right. And, it, you know, this was one of those things that this is a tool we've been working on for years and years. And so you learn this from the users. You know, mm -hmm. we talk to our customers all the time and, and the, you know, they would say, hey, we need this function on. And so we, you know, we've been building iteratively with our customers all along. Mm -hmm. Now, the last thing I want to mention kind of on this example that we've been going through is we've generated two Word documents, but our tool supports both formats. So it, you can generate Word documents, but you can also generate PDF documents. And, um, you know, we have great support for both. So we filled out this government form. We've done some fancy things like break up the social security number and make sure it fits right in the various boxes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so this automation tool is really meant to be, it's not a spot solution for Word. It's not a spot solution for PDF. It's for all your workflow and document automation needs. Um, now, the one thing I want to return to kind of on if we go back to our workspace is not only can you run these apps directly from within Net Documents, but you can share them. So you can go here, you can click share, and you can um, deliver a secure link, for example, a password protected link or mm -hmm. a link that expires to external users. If you don't want it to be password protected, you don't want it to expire, you can do that too. You can take that link, put it on your website and have an intake form. You can also share internally with other users. So we've got great in, you know, sharing capabilities. And because this is net documents, you get all the benefits of net documents. So for example, if you have a, you know, an agreement that's generated and then you need to send it out for signature, well, just click right here, click on send a DocuSign mm -hmm. and you're off to the races. Great. Um, so the next thing I wanted to do was kind of show you a little bit under the hood and, and show you kind of how this is built. So let's actually pop into the editor right here. Now, not everyone needs to have access at your firm to the editor. You can kind of permission in such a way that's only a limited subset of users. Good. Um, but you can um, go ahead and build out uh, your own automation. So let's actually deactivate this automation and just take a quick peek. We'll, we won't go too deep because there's mm -hmm. kind of a lot to unpack, but I think it's good to kind of show you that this wasn't built with code. This was something that if you've ever worked with a form builder like Google Forms or Qualtrics or um, you know, job forms, mm -hmm. this should be very familiar. You add questions, you get those questions to find a variable, you can add logic. So let's actually go down to one of those logical blocks here. Um, so for example, you remember that checkbox question, stock options or sales commission. Mm -hmm. Well, you can define what we call show if logic. So 
show this question if this is true, benefit stock is true, which is mm -hmm. this question up here. Um, the other thing that I want to show you is that, uh, you know, it, within the web editor, you can actually edit, upload, dynamically drop fields onto PDFs. Um, you can also do the same for Word documents. So if we go over here to this Word document, we have a native web editor where you can actually create the Word document. You can add conditional logic if you want. Um, so this, this is really good for kind of simple Word documents. Mm -hmm. But I think the best and most powerful kind of document automation capability we offer is actually we have a Word add-in. So if you go ahead and download this document, which was actually created via admin add uh, add in, as you see, we can go ahead, open it up, and let's let's take a look at this. Let's enable editing. Let's open our Net Documents Word add-in right here, and there you go. So these are form fields that we've actually dropped directly onto um, this template. Mm -hmm. And you can see you can add more with just the click of a button. So if you want to start adding to um, this uh, automation, you just go ahead and say, okay, I want to add this accommodations variable right here. You can click on it. You can add insert if logic. So there's some really rich capabilities and you can do it all within desktop Word, Word Online, Word in Teams, wherever you are using Word, mm -hmm. you can use this regardless of whether you're on a Windows or Mac device. Okay. Hang on. So so this will work in the local version of Word and it will also work in the online version of Word. That's right. So there, Microsoft is making a big push to get mm -hmm. a lot of companies to adopt what's called M365 Word add-ins. And those work everywhere you could use Word. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of legacy providers um, use comms add-ins, which means they're you know kind of specific to your device. They don't play well with Word Online. They don't play well with Word, you know, Teams. Um, but this just works everywhere. And so we're very committed to kind of a modern user experience for anyone who's building on, on Pattern Builder. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, great. So we've gone through, I think, kind of the first and like simple use case. Uh, now let's get into data tables. All right. Well, and you say simple use case. I think that's a use <laughs> case that people, you know, can can look at and go, oh, yeah, that's that's the exact type of thing I want. You know, you you build that. Um, I like that you call it apps instead of of like a guided interview or an intake or something like that, because that's really more what it is at this point. But you build that that kind of guided interview um, sort of thing that lets you work through it and, and create these documents dynamically um, in multiple documents. I'm glad you showed that, too. Yeah. And and one of the things I, I always like to emphasize with this tool, which is, is that while document automation is at the heart of what. Um, the tool does, and it's you know at the heart of what legal professionals do every day. It's preparing mm -hmm. documents. Right. Um, it is not by any means what it's limited to. So if if you want to create an app that just automates a workflow or provides maybe specialized guidance based on some rules, maybe you have some complicated tax regulations you need to you know uh, understand, and mm -hmm. you can create a workflow around that. The other really common use case, which we're going to start with right here is for intake. So you could send this form out again to a client or um, a customer, or you could uh, actually just do the intake yourself, mm -hmm. but you can have automations that aren't about um, generating a document at all. It's just about collecting data because data really, and, and we believe this firmly, data is what's at the heart of everything. It's at the mm -hmm. heart of every document, every workflow. And so that's why um, we're so excited about this new function, which I'm gonna show you in just a moment, um, that allows you to not only collect data, store it, reuse it, operate on it, you know, and, and, and really make that data, um, you know, power your, your firm. Here we go. Um, this is a real estate um, intake form. One of the things right away I want to show you is that you can click here and, you know, let's say you want to search a database and pull in information from it. Well, right here I can select a client and this is doing a search into a uh, company's database that I have, and I'll, I'll show you in a moment. Um, but in this case, I don't want to uh, select an existing client to create this new matter for. Instead, I'm going to add a new client. And again, I'll use my handy dandy plugin and just you know fill in some uh, information here. So the company we're uh, creating a real estate matter for is uh, Guerrero Stark. 
we've got some information about them, like their the entity is their partnership, you know, state where their headquarters, Delaware, and they've got exactly a hundred employees. Um, now let's provide some information about the real estate holdings. So I'll do one, two, three, uh, Paul Street. Uh, there we go. And we'll do a uh, residential property and we'll do, it's for a hundred thousand. And again, we'll just add one more property here. So we'll do uh, three, two, one, Paul Street. Back to that loop that, that you showed us earlier. That's right. Yep. It's such a you know critical piece of almost every workflow. Mm -hmm. And then finally, when we hit continue here, um, you'll note that uh, we're just uh, generating a new client and a new matter. So we've generated a new matter for uh, Guerrero Stark. So we can now just return the net documents platform and anytime we want, we can just go ahead and type ahead and we can see there's Guerrero Stark added as a new client. We have a real estate matter that's been added. So we can just click and we'll be navigated directly to this new workspace that's been set up for this, um, you know, for this client. So that's one of the things that's so powerful about that native connection between Pattern Builder and Net Documents is you can do things like provision a new workspace. Um, and have that set up so that it has exactly the filters and the folders you want in it. Mm -hmm. um, and in addition to that, has exactly the um, automations you want to use. And so here we have, you know, we've intaked this client, we have all their information, which I'll show you in a moment um, via the data table. But, you know, let's say a couple months go by and now we need to help this client sell some of the property that mm -hmm. they have. And so, one way you could do that is you could, you know, go and talk to them again and collect all the information you already collected from them um, and, and then manually fill it into a document. But with data tables, what you can do is you can just click on an app and that app can, because it's being launched from this workspace, it knows to pull in all the data you have about that, um, about that client. So right, at, right away, we see that the company name is filled in, the entity type is filled in and the state where their headquarters has been filled in. If you had a hundred pieces of data, you could pull in all of that data all at once mm -hmm. um, and, and have it ready for this automation. So in this case, all we need to do is then go ahead and just you know, uh, fill in the information about the purchaser of the property. So this is JKL Inc., you know, maybe where they're headquartered. And then this is interesting. So this dropdown right here is actually populated with the two properties that are mm -hmm. owned by um, Guerrero Stark. So this is dynamically pulling from your database. Um, we've got this, um, you know, this selector. If you want, you could even go ahead and say, I want to sell all my property and just um, have all that property, uh, you know, have a document generated for each one. Mm -hmm. But for this use case, let's just go ahead and select um, 321 Paul Street, give it a sale price, and then um, go ahead and hit continue. And so, you know, we've seen this before. We've generated two documents here for the sale. Uh, those documents have been filed direct, directly back into the workspace, and they include all the information um, about the, uh, the client that we had previously uh, filled out. Mm -hmm. That's all been uh, filled into the document automatically without us having to re-enter any of that. So we've got the, you know, Guerrero Stark co uh, company, that they're a Delaware partnership, um, you know, we've got the information about the property that's being sold, 321, Paul Street, mm -hmm. purchase price, all that good information has been filled in automatically. And again, it's been filed back to the uh, workspace. So if we go here and we click on go to workspace, we'll see, um, you know, that both the property purchase agreement for 321 Paul Street and the deed have been generated and filed back and here. And that's that workspace that you dynamically created initially with yep. that, that previous um, app as well. That's exactly right. So this is, all of this is dynamic, right? I don't have to, I'm not clicking extra buttons to create the workspace or to, you know, add the folders or the filters I want to a particular workspace. It's all just there and ready. Right. And it really, you know, these kind of workflows, I think, can significantly impact, um, you know, the pace at which uh, firms are able to to deliver uh, value to their customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been hinting at data tables for a while. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's about time we actually got to them. So let, let's take a look at kind of what powered that workflow we just saw. So if we go here, we can, you know, um, there's a lot of different capabilities here, but let's, let's focus on data tables. Um, 
And here we go. These are data tables that I've created. You could create as many data tables as you want. If you've mm -hmm. ever used a tool like Airtable, it's very similar to that. Um, you can go into any of those data tables and uh, you can see all the information about all the different uh, companies you've collected information about. Mm. And so here we go. We've got Guerrero Stark. That was the company we were looking at. We can open up this record. You'll notice right away that there's these little um, icons that show you the data type. So not only can we store text type data, but we can store um, we can store dates. We can store rich text if you want like a clause library. Mm -hmm. um, we can store numbers. And the importance of having these different data types is when you pull this data into your workflows, you can immediately do things like, okay, this is a number data. Let's go ahead and perform a calculation on that. Or this is a date piece of data. Let's go ahead and see the difference between today's date and the date that's stored here. So by having those data types and being able to dynamically add um, new types of data, um, it really allows for you to unlock powerful workflows. I love how you just skate past a, a, a lot of things that y'all have in here, like <laughs> the ability to create a clause library. You know, like if you want to create a clause library, who doesn't want to create a clause library? You know, um, yeah. there are companies all over that that their whole thing is is being able to manage clauses that you have. And so yeah. um, just the idea of being able to, you, you can create the clause library and then also have a way of um, getting to those clauses, you can create, you know, you can do a ton of things with the clauses that you need for, um, for, um, you know, contracts. I mean, just, just yeah. even without dynamically creating clauses that are, that are in there, you can select clauses as you go, um, when you're, when you're using a clause library. So, um, thanks for just skating past that and, uh, <laughs> um, you know, casually knocking that out there. I do want to hang on that again also. You know, you can save full clauses in here in an ordered fashion where you can get to them uh, inside your your uh, document. Yeah, that, that, that's right. I mean, I think one of the beauties of building a, a toolkit and, and making that available um, to legal professionals is that we're building capabilities. We're building foundational building blocks. And then you can leverage those to create, honestly, many of the things that you might see out there as spot solutions. Right. So this is kind of a Swiss Army knife to build what you need when you need it. Um, and, and, and that's what we'll continue to double down on. I mean, today we're talking about data tables. We've got more and more uh, coming for Pattern Builder in the future. Mm -hmm. The dashboards into this data so you can create kind of, um, you know, customer facing or maybe, uh, you know, internal facing dashboards into this data. That's coming this year. We've got some enhancements to workflow and we've got some really cool stuff around AI. Um, and, and just adding more and more of those blocks to kind of the pattern builder experience. Mm -hmm. um, but data tables, it sounds boring. It's a database, you know, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be honest, but I'm a nerd. Um, and, it, you know, the sort of use cases this can unlock, the ability to add your, you know, new columns. Let's say, you know, mm -hmm. I need a tax ID column. Okay. I just found that out today. I'm going to go ahead and add that. It's a date type column. I'm going to just hit save and boom, I've added um, a tax ID column right here. Um, the ability to be able to do that, to build as you go, mm -hmm. um, is so important because let's imagine, um, if this weren't a tool that you could build with, and instead this was a solution, um, if you wanted to add a new field, well, you better hope that the software vendor, you know, has that capability or that they're going to listen to you when you ask them to add it because, uh, you don't have any way to do it yourself, but with Pattern Builder, you can do it yourself. You can customize your net documents experience. You can customize your workflows. Mm -hmm. And I think ultimately that's the future of, of legal. It's being able to you know, put these tools into people's hands um, that actually are experiencing the issues firsthand so they can solve their own problems. So it's a, a tool to build tools. That's right. <laughs> Um, and yeah, that, I mean, that, that, was, that was the main piece that we were hoping to get through today. Any other questions you have for me, Zach? Scott, I've got a ton, but uh, yeah. I don't know that we have we have time for those. It, it's uh, probably going to be um, another time in order to get too deep into these things, but, because I, I think that you you hit on the the main stuff here. You know, yeah. the but I do want to say that these data tables, although uh, to some of us they do look sexy. Um, to, to others, they, they don't necessarily, but with this sort of thing, you can, uh, um, you can implement a, 
database that can track most anything here. You know, um, I, I think when looking at the connection between pattern builder and net documents and the fact that it is a automation platform, I, I don't even want to say document automation platform at this point, but it's an automation platform built into a content manager as opposed to a client manager or a matter manager kind of makes people go, well, I, I don't, I won't necessarily have all the information, but these data tables mean that you can put all the information you need about clients, about potential clients, even about matters that you have about cases. You, you can, you know, the, the, it, it is huge what you could do with this with a little bit of imagination. So I, I think these are extremely uh, important and, and they're, they're very exciting to, to see in here. Yeah. And, and I think to touch on kind of the point you just made, it's important to note that, yes, you can have apps that put data into these tables, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can actually go into a particular table and you can add new records uh, yourself if you want to. But another really critical and common use case that we're seeing is folks are like, look, I've got data here. I've got data there. I've got data in all these different places, um, but I need it now in one place so that I can actually use it, act on it, and and you know really deliver uh, my services at scale. Mm -hmm. And so data tables lets you do that. Data tables have a very robust and open API. So okay. if you have Salesforce data, if you have you know a law practice management system where you need to kind of unify your data so that you can then automate your documents or create a re you know a reviews and approvals workflow or whatever you need to do you can use data tables to store that data, act on that data, and, and ultimately automate. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I, I think the, the difficulty a lot of times when using an automation platform of, of sorts is how does that platform get to our information? And mm -hmm. if using an API to bring that information, and, and API um, is just so people know, it, it's a way for two pieces of software essentially to talk to each other to transfer information um, from one place to another uh, I mean like that I'm sure other people can explain it a lot better but um, it, it's a way of getting information into these data tables from disparate um, other pieces of software and so being able to collect that information put it in the place that the automating software can get to is is huge because Zapier can't get to everything yeah. you know and, and power automate can't get to everything. And you have to be able to bring that information into a, a centralized location. Yeah. And, and, and one thing I would sort of end on, I think, is that, you know, there's a lot here. There's a lot to kind of take in, of course. Um, but the, the beauty of a platform like NetDocuments that has, you know, stores billions of documents and has, you know, thousands and thousands of firms using us uh, all across the world is we have a really, really um, robust partner ecosystem. Mm. So even if you look at something like this and you're like, you know what, I, I don't think I'm ready to, to build a data table or build a document automation. Well, you don't have to. We've got partners who can help you. They can build your document automations. They can build the kind of the data store that makes sense for you. If you need to integrate different pieces of software into this, mm -hmm. um, they're ready to help. And so I think that's the power of the platform is that we have so many builders who are building on top of net documents. It's not just us as a company, um, it's our partners. And now with a capability like Pattern Builder and Data Tables, um, it's you. You can build net documents too. I was about to say the same thing to, to you know, Come see all the builders that are building with net documents and and pattern builder and become one of them yourself um so well scott th this this was actually I was excited about this, but this was even more um information than i i um had expected um from data tables and and pattern builder but so I'm sure there are people that want to learn more. And if they do, they can go to netdocuments.com slash products slash pattern builder, which is where you're showing right now. We will put that link in the show notes. Um, Scott, again, thank you for, for being with me and, and uh, showing us around this. This is, uh, this, this is a very, very cool product. Yeah. Thanks so much, Zach, for, uh, for chatting with me today. It's been, it's been a pleasure as always. And uh Look forward to doing a few more of these in the future as we uh, continue to build on Pattern Builder. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. And we'll see you next time.